I'll be the sole inheritor of the entire thing, no matter what anyone else has to say. Now activating program 13. Process of self-destruction has been initiated. Countdown begun. Five minutes to detonation. No! Oh! I'll never give it up! Not to anyone! Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today I have here in front of me the wiki of Lei Shaolong. Is it Lei Shaolong? Li Wulong? Whatever. We're going to be reading this wiki and breaking down different aspects of the character. Because when you talk about Tekken 8 and one of the Mishimas being slain next, I honestly think Lei Wu Long, I'm just gonna say Violet for the purpose of this video. Violet is probably the most likely to be slain. Jin will not die. Kazuya, I do not think he will die in Tekken 8. Uh, they will be smart to, to explain that story over the course of one to two episodes. As in Lars, I think is 100% safe because of Alyssa. But at the same time, Alyssa could drag him down. I don't know, I'll create a poll roughly the same time this video goes up and I'll put all four names and you guys can vote which Mishima sort of oriented character do you think will go down next? Jen, Kazuya, Lars, or Violet? Let's start reading. Lei Shalon, AKA Violet, is an orphan adopted by Heiachi Mishima. He is an head of the Mishima Zaibatsu Corporation and later becoming embroiled in a one-sided rivalry with his adopted brother, Kazuya Mishima. Now, I wanna stop right here. We're gonna stop the first sentence in and I am simply wondering why Heiachi decided to adopt a child. I think if we knew the motives here, um, this would be really cool. And also I wonder if Kazumi had some role in this. I just wish we can see a little bit back on how this happened. Because when you think of adopting a child, Heiachi does not seem like the person who would do that. So I just wish we had some sort of explanation. And also I wonder if Kazumi had some input on this as well, right? The defeat of Kazuya is Lee's primary objective in entering the King of Iron Fist fighting tournaments. Since making his debut in the original Tekken, Lee has been a mainstay in the series, appearing in every subsequent game except for Tekken 3, and has his times appeared as an altered ego named Violet, who additionally playable in the several series installments. Outside of the games, Lei has appeared in two animated films and has been received a positive critical reception for his flamboyant personality and particularly his Tekken 5 ending. Hmm, I wonder what's so special about his Tekken 5 ending that made this character so cool. Hopefully they'll talk about it in the wiki. If not, I'm definitely gonna find the video and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. But if you go back and if you watch the Tekken motion picture, this is a 40 to 50 minute anime that was released in the 90s. I did a breakdown, you guys can go watch that. Just go to the Tekken lore playlist and you'll find it. But I like there how in the, in the Tekken motion picture, you see how Violet is kind of jealous of Kazuya. As long as my brother's alive, then I'm the adopted son with second-rate clout. Mm -hmm. You see, you and I have a lot more in common than you originally thought. You're the only one who genuinely understands me, Hana. Here's to us. That's so sweet. Like he said, the main objective is to defeat Kazuya. So once it is time for the Mishima Zaibatsu throne to be uh, passed, he is the one who takes it. Because if Kazuya is in the picture in any shape whatsoever, then the throne will be passed to him. So I think it's really cool to see how he's battling for his position. He's adopted, he's not the, he's not blood. And that kind of messes with the mind, at least in the motion picture it did. In the story, I don't know if they went that deep or if he really didn't feel that way. Let's continue reading. Lei is a Chinese adopted son of Heiachi Mishima, whose own son Kazuya's defeat is Lee's motivation for entering the numerous King of Iron Fist tournaments held throughout the Tekken series. Lee was adopted by Heiachi to provide a rival for Kazuya, 
who felt he was too weak to lead the Mishima Zaibatsu company. Lay studied in the United States alongside Paul Phoenix and martial law. This is kind of interesting here. They kind of give us a reason why he was adopted. It specifically said, and this is how twisted Heiachi is. Heiachi is so, so twisted. He didn't adopt Lee because he loved him or he wanted another kid or this and that. He, it specifically says he felt Kazuya was too weak. So he adopted someone to try to push Kazuya to be tougher, stronger, and, and basically threaten him. Say, if you don't get tougher, then you will not get the throne. This other person will. And that was supposed to motivate Kazuya to become more vicious, more cutthroat. And I'm guessing this is all happening before Heiachi knew that Kazumi had the devil gene and Kazuya, right? Because there would have been no discussion at that point. And the part here where it says studies in the United States alongside Paul Phoenix and martial law. I don't know if that means all of them went to the same school because that study in the United States can be anything. That can be middle school, high school, college. So that really is a loose term. Um, but the way that it's phrased here makes me assume that they all like actually know each other because alongside means like they know each other right after Kazuya wins control of the company Lee works as Kazuya's secretary in addition to overseeing Kazuya's team of bodyguards and Dr. Boskanovich experiments all the while secretly hoping to take over the Zaibatsu so here you have I think this is talking about uh Tekken 2 Kazuya takes control and I always wondered where Lee was at because I thought Kazuya would like strike him down too. Like Kazuya's out of here and you are too. Because you see how Kazuya was trying to position this character against Kazuya. But Kazuya kind of accepts him and has him overlooking all of these things. Not only being his secretary, but overseeing the bodyguards and the science experiments. That's three major uh, or operations that Lee is in charge of. And it makes you wonder what else is there to control when you're talking about the Mishima Zaibatsu. I guess you have all the political stuff and like the, the Mishima Zaibatsu high school. So I guess they have a lot of stuff, right? But Lee, even in Kazuya's control, still has a big uh, control over the company. And you can see that he's waiting for his opportunity to strike. And I assume at this point too, they know that Kazuya has the devil gene. So Lee probably fully understands how powerful Kazuya is. It says, however Lee is soon expelled from the Mishima Zaibatsu for unknown reasons while Heiachi disowns him causing him to leave the world of fighting and pursuing a career in robotics. So Heiachi comes back and take over in Tekken 3 or at the end of Tekken 2. No, Kazuya takes out Heiachi in Tekken 1. Heiachi comes back and takes out Kazuya in Tekken 2 and then Jin takes them out in Tekken 3. Isn't that how it works? So when Heiachi comes back in King Iron Fist Tournament 2, he gets rid of Lee for I'm guessing not taking out Kazuya, avenging Heiachi after. Heiachi probably felt bitter. Like, I lost and then you just switch sides and join him? He probably felt betrayed um, and that's probably why he turned on him. And this is also when Lee starts going down his own path in robotics. I'm guessing this is when Violet Systems uh, is created. And it kind of would make sense too because Lars, when he broke off from the Mishima Zaibatsu, a lot of people came up with him. And I would assume it would be the same thing with Violet. Violet breaks off, there's gonna be a lot of people from the bodyguards, science, and whatever that third thing was, breaking off with him. So I think that's interesting to see how these characters had so much power, and then when they leave, they kind of take some of it with them. Uh, hi, ano, this is Excellent! Excellent! Oh, excellent! Lee returns in Tekken 4 as a playboy whose robotic operations is a success. Upon learning that the Zaibatsu's rival G Corporation was attacked by the Tekken Force, Lee joins the fourth tournament after changing his appearance and calling himself Violet in order to conceal his identity. Okay, 
I always thought Violet was like a split personality disorder. I don't know if it's considered a disability or not, but I always thought he had a split personality. But I guess here, it's not a split personality. He simply just does it to go undercover. And you kind of would think he would change his outfit more. He literally just changed the color of his hair and then he puts on a different color jacket. And it's like, your father and your brother is going to recognize you. So you really, really is going to have to change up your outfit, right? But he joins in the tournament while hoping to test the new combat experiment in the process. However, he is defeated in later stages by Kazuya, defeated once again, whom Lee had believed to be dead. But he then learned someone else had controlled the Zaibachu in Heiachi's absence. Believing it to be Kazuya, Lee enters the King of Iron Fist tournament five to take him out personally and regain control of the Zaibatsu. But upon learning that the culprit is Lee's apparent adoptive parental grandfather, Jinpachi, he drops out the tournament and returns to his business. <laughs> I don't know why that is funny. In Tekken 4, he's joining the tournament, but he gets beat up by Kazuya. And then in Tekken 5, he finds out that Heiachi's like kind of dead, I guess. I guess this is the second time where Heiachi sort of fakes his death or is presumed dead. Um, and then he joins in to try to take the throne. He's like, all I have to do is get past Jin and Kazuya. This is a piece of cake. And then he finds out that the grandfather Jinpachi is alive and possessed by demons and he's like nah i'm good this is getting too crazy i'm out that is so funny how he he doesn't even like fight he's like who who's in charge nah i'm good and it just leaves this is what i've been asking for these tournaments have been getting so ridiculous and i keep asking why do people keep going back and finally you have a character realize how ridiculous the tournament is and they drop out. They simply leave and they go back to doing. Why don't more characters do that? Especially after six, seven tournaments, you would assume it's rigged. You would assume it's dangerous. It's all kind of stuff. Excellent. Let's continue reading. After Kazuya legitimately takes control of the company, Lee enters the next tournament in an attempt to come in contact with Kazuya. In the game scenario campaign story mode, Lee joins forces with Julio and Lars and Dr. Boskanovich, android daughter Alyssa. Due to their shared objective of stopping Kazuya and Jin, but Lee and Lars not aware at first that Alyssa was created to serve Jin, thus acting as a mole for Lars. When Alyssa is destroyed, Lee promises Lars that she will be reconstructed with his company resources, which finally succeeded at the same time of Heiachi's return in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. The question that I have now is why does Lee have such a grudge against Kazuya? Any time that he thinks or knows that Kazuya is in charge, he immediately joins in the tournament and he's trying to fight. Every time Kazuya is not in charge or he's not the one hosting the tournament, he, he's sleeping in bed, the alarm clock isn't set, he's you know having dinner dates with Kambad and looking at himself. Why when it's Kazuya in charge, why do he charge in there? I know he was adopted by Heiachi to be the rival, but he really is embodying that spirit of I'm the rival. And it's kind of funny too because he has his own organization. I believe when you're talking about Tekken, in terms of strength, it goes Mishima Zaibatsu, G Corporation, and Violet Systems. His own organization is very, very powerful. It's so powerful, in fact, that Lars, when he breaks away, they go to him for help, right? It's fascinating how he's trying to merge them still after all this time. Now that is it for his story in terms of one through seven. And I really think it's going to be interesting to see what he does in Tekken 8. Because like I said, every single time Kazuya is the main focus, he's active. So the fact that Kazuya is in charge or the main villain of Tekken 8, you know Violet is going to be all over it. He's going to be trying to take him out. He's going to, and honestly too, when you talk about Violet, going back to the beginning where I said Violet is the most likely to die, you honestly can have this character betray betray everyone. 
Right now, it's Jen, Alyssa, Lars, and Violet. Those four characters are united. And at a certain point, if you really wanted to, you can have Violet seize the opportunity. Jen and Kazia are fighting each other, and then Violet takes control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. You really could pit these Mishimas against one another because if you look at it, it's really not black and white. It's not a Team Jin versus Team Kazuya. All of these characters have their own objectives at the end of the day. Kazuya wants absolute power. Not really, but kinda. Jin wants to get rid of the Mishimas and the Devil Gene. Lars wants to get rid of the Devil Gene and for all the wars to stop. And then Lee wants to merge the Mishima Zaibatsu. We don't know what his plan is after that, but he wants to merge these organizations and create a, a like mega powerhouse. And I'm guessing world domination will soon follow. And when you talk about characters like Violet and Lars, I kind of want them to go down these paths of betrayal. They don't really have to betray Jin, but I think they should get their own agency from Jin. Like, I don't want them to just be following Jen around like sidekicks, right? I want them to be having their own goals and their own objectives. And I really hope for a character like Violet being one of the very first to ever be in a Tekken game, I want this character to stand out amongst his uh, family, right? The Mishimas. Just imagine that. While Jen and Kazuya and Lars is all fighting and tussling out in the middle of nowhere, Lee is secretly merging all of these organizations. Like I really want people to go vote on that poll because if Kazuya dies, who is the next villain? Quote unquote villain. I think Violet is a very, very good pick. I have a screenshot here that talks about Tekken 5's ending. This was said at the beginning of the wiki that this is incredible. So we're gonna read it and we're gonna break it down. Lee's Tekken 5 ending, which depicts him living luxuriously with Heiji as his personal servant dressed only in spoon briefs with a bow tie. He has received critical attention for its perceived homoeroticisms. So I'm, I'm guessing it gives off the vibes that he may be like bisexual or gay or something like that, right? In 2019, Michael of PlayStation Universe ranked it 7th greatest Tekken ending of all time. Lee enjoys the fruits of his labors and humiliates Heiachis by having him serve as his thong wearing poolside lackey. However, Crack.com included that in their 2013 uh, feature six video games endings that are clearly screwing with us commenting that there is no doubt in my mind the makers of that cutscene had to delete 40 minutes of video because the rating system would not allow for a full length hardcore wow. In 2013 feature 10 video games endings with disturbing implications you totally missed. Wow people is really fixated on this Tekken 5 ending. Another quote says all of the strange Oh, oh, I don't even know what that is. Mesh plays out with both men wearing nothing more than a speedo and were encouraged to laugh at the misfortune of the fallen villain, as well as marvel at his firm, ancient body while he is powerless to run or fight back. Seriously, people were trashing on this. Lee was listed as the number one best Tekken character by Gavin Jasper and Den of Geek, whom observed with Tekken being about taking the main hero trope and turning it on its head. Lee's an extension of that who has un unexpectedly became the coolest guy in the series. Give me a second. I need to look up this Tekken 5 ending because I kind of remember it from these descriptions, but why are people like bashing it so incredibly hard like this? Oh my god. I could only imagine someone seeing this for the first time ever. 
急いだ方がいい。死にたくなければ。I can only imagine seeing this for the first time ever because Tekken 5 was pre-internet. So seeing this like by yourself, your mind probably would have been blown. I now now let me say this. I don't think that gives people the reason to say all those things they were saying. But seeing Heiichi dressed like this, I can only imagine. Yeah, this is crazy. Honestly, I think it's pretty cool though. It's a like like there was one comment that said it, it flips the idea of a villain on its head, and that's kind of what Tekken always been good at. There's sometimes where they go too far and they make characters too much of a joke, but here I feel like this in no way damages the character of Heiachi. It's more so like a dream, like a fairy tale, like a what if.、Um, I think that's what a lot of the endings are. It's just a what if scenario. What this character would do if they won. Like I believe in Tekken Three or something like that. Zhao Yu traveled back in time. You know, that's kind of the same. Ballpark of craziness, right? But like I said, I think Lee has a lot of、um, potential going into Tekken Eight. They can make this character、uh, sacrifice himself or betray Jin, betray Kazuya. This character can go down so many different pathways. And in this video, I just want to read the story, understand the wiki, and just try to have a better understanding of what's. Could happen in Tekken 8. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. I will be covering more characters as we get closer to the game. So subscribe, like, and stay tuned for that. I'll see you next time, and bye. -bye. They won't work. What? I said they won't work. The moves used by one who doesn't believe in Ken. You're wrong. <laughs>